In this video, we will show you how to connect Voice Flow to Notion database. First, you need to create an account with Notion.com. After that, let us go to developers.notion.com to create integration. On the top right corner of the developer's web page, click on the button. Depending on the status, you may see different words on the button. Then click the plus new integration button. On this page, let us scroll up to see create a new integration. This means we are on the right web page. In the basic information, we have the type as internal and associated workspace with a default one. Let us scroll down and we are going to enter the name of the integration. This name should be unique and readers know what this integration is for. Since we are going to use VoiceFlow API to test the VoiceFlow connecting to a Notion database, let us enter the name of VoiceFlow test API. After we enter the integration's name, we can see that we can upload image for this integration. Here I am going to skip this step and let us click the submit button. Now our integration has been created. Let us click the show button and then copy the integration secret key. On a notebook, we paste the secret key here and save it for later use. Next, let us go to our Notion account page. On the left menu, we click the new page button. On the pop-up window, we will enter the name. We are going to create a table to store our data. So the title will be voice flow data table. It is very convenient to update data. For example, product data here. As we will add a new table, we click the table button. Here shows our new table has been created. The next step is to select a data source. You can see your data source list and choose one. Here we click on new database. This will create a new database on Notion, which we will use for voice flow to fetch data from. We will populate the table with simple data. As always, let us use pizza toppings products as examples. We enter toppings as the name of the column. Click the Edit Property button. The type is chosen as Multi-Select. Close this, and we are going to enter data. We have mushroom and meat toppings. We enter the first product, mushroom, topping on the first row. The second product is meat topping, and we press Enter to make sure it is saved on the table. We will add another column on the table. The name of the column is Price, which will show the price of the toppings. Again, we choose the property of the new column as Multi-Select. The type is important because the API will convert the data into JSON format, and we will use the response to consistently extract all the data. Let us enter the price 1.5 for the mushroom topping and 2 for the meat topping. In the first column, we enter the product numbers of 1 and 2 to represent each of our topping products. After populating the table, we move to the top right corner and click on the three dot icon. We will add our integration to this data table. Click the Add Connections button. We find our new integration voice flow test API, and we click confirm to continue. In the connections list, we can see our integration. Next, we will get the ID of our Notion database. Click the share button on the top right corner. For the accessibility setting, we select the accessibility as anyone with link can access. Then click copy link button to copy the link. Let us paste it on the notebook and save it for later use. Now we are going to use the voice flow canvas. Let us select an API block and put it on the canvas. We will set the parameters for this API block in order to connect to our Notion database. We choose Get because the voice flow will make API calls to fetch data. We enter the URL of Notion API address. We go to our notebook and copy the ID of our Notion database, which is the part highlighted here. Do not be confused with the rest of the numbers. We paste the ID along with the Notion URL. In the header section, click the plus sign to add one pair. We enter the key authorization and the value of bearer. We will add the secret key after the bearer. Let us go to our notebook and copy the secret key of our integration and paste the secret key next to bearer. This key gives us access to our Notion database. Let us click the plus sign to add another pair. In this key value pair, we enter the key of Notion version. And the value is the date of 2022-06-28. After all this, we click the send request button to test the API connection. This window shows the API call is successful. It returns data in the JSON format. It shows that the object is database. Let us pay attention to the properties, which contain all of our data stored on our Notion table. We can see the price values and toppings. Each data has ID, name, type, and multi-select. The multi-select contains an options array, which stores ID, name, and color properties of each product. We will extract all the information we need for our chatbot. 
Next, we will use a pizza bot to demo how it works in a real project. We use the same API block to get data from our Notion database. In the capture response, we enter response.properties, which we saw in the request. The properties data will be saved to a variable, which is named as all types. Let us find the variable in the variable list and select all types. This variable saves all the Notion data obtained by the VoiceFlow API call. Next, let us go to our Notion table. I have updated the table with product data. I have listed five pizzas with their names, contents, and image links. These will be fetched by our VoiceFlow chatbot. Let us go back to our demo. In this demo, we use the dynamic carousel to display our products after we get the data from Notion. In the middle, it is the API block which can connect to the Notion database and get the JSON data. Let us look at the demo step by step. The first block is a text block to welcome the customer. I am the AI assistant of Mars Pizza Restaurant. What can I help you with? Next, there will be two buttons for the customer to click on. One is to order a pizza, and the other is to end conversation. If the customer clicks the button to order a pizza, it will go to this block, which says, Great. We have specialty pizzas. Would you like to have a look? Next will be two buttons. One is yes, and the other is no. If the customer clicks the yes button, it will lead to the API block. The API block will connect to our Notion database and make an API call to fetch data from the Notion table. It will return JSON data with all the product information. The API block settings are same as previously shown. We select Get and put the Notion URL with the ID of our Notion table. In the headers section, we put authorization and bearer with the secret key. Next, we enter the Notion version and the value here. As previously shown, we capture the response with all the properties data and save it to the variable all types. The data will then be used in the next steps. In the following block, a JavaScript block deals all the data and prepares the variables for the carousel. For more details, please watch our previous video on the dynamic carousel. Briefly, we have a variable dynamic pizza carousel to store all the product cards. The get card function can accept arguments which populate the card parameters such as title, description, image URL, and buttons. One card uses the data of one product. Next it is a for loop to loop through all the product data. As shown in the response result, we use all types .pizza .multi -select options length to get the number of our products. In order to get the product name, we use all types .pizza .multi -select options I name. In order to get the product image link, we use all types .image .multi -select options I name. In order to get the product content, we use all types .content .multi -select options I name. We save all the three data to their corresponding variables, type name, image type, and type content. We then pass all the variables to the get card function to generate cards for all the products. And all the product cards are pushed into the cards array of the dynamic pizza carousel variable. After we get all the data, we need to generate the JSON format of the variable using the function of json.stringify. The JSON data will be passed to the next step to generate a carousel to display our products. The next step is a custom action block. We put carousel as the name. In the action body, we select JSON and place the variable dynamic pizza carousel. In the path section, enter pizza selected as the default path and make sure that the stop on action is turned on. The next step is to extract the product if the customer click on the order button. In the JavaScript, we use last event dot payload dot pizza selected to get the data and save it to the variable. The last text block is simply to confirm the customer's order and show the ordered product with the variable. And lastly say thank you to end the conversation. Finally, let us test the whole chat bot to see if it works okay, including the API block to connect to the Notion database and return the product data from the Notion table. We start from the beginning and click on the first block. Then, click the order a pizza button and yes button to see the products. The API successfully fetched data from Notion and displays the pizzas on the carousel. Let us click the button to order a buffalo chicken pizza. Our order has been confirmed and shown here. This means the whole process works successfully. Let us go over the API settings one more time. In order to receive data from Notion, we set the request type as get and enter the Notion URL with the ID of the database. We also need the authorization of bearer of the secret key and the Notion version. 
After the API call, we save the properties from the response to our variable, which contains all the data and will be used in later process. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.